Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. SciFly sets a new world record for endurance. We have Inspired Flight that is releasing a new controller. We had Free Flight Fest that we went to, that was fun. And then lastly, as always, a good old Don't Be Die Guy segment, this time again in Florida. Let's get to it. And first up this week, California-based drone manufacturer SciFly has officially set a new Guinness World Record for flight endurance. Their Q12 platform, that's a prototype quadcopter, completed a flight that lasted for, wait for it, three hours and 11 minutes. That's right, this is incredible. Uh, this absolutely shatters the previous record for a small electric powered multi-rotor drone by almost a full hour. The record setting flight took place on July 26 in California, Salina Valley. They said that it was certified by an official from Guinness on site. If you're not familiar, the Q12 is a multi-rotor aircraft that is designed for these kind of long duration missions. It features a modular all electric design and can carry a 10 pound payload over a 90 mile range. Now the company says that it can maintain a continuous hover for two hours, which is perfect for, for example, something like persistent overwatch. This is definitely a big deal for applications like drone as first responders, search and rescue, large scale infrastructure inspections, and uh, all of the likes. Now SciFly even says that that they're aiming to hit four hours of flight time within the year. And if that's true, I'm gonna be even more impressed. Uh, next up, another great story from a US-based manufacturer. This time, Inspired Flight Technologies has just launched a new ground control station. It's called the GS-1. It's a rugged handheld controller that's aimed squarely at uh, professional operators in the commercial, industrial, and the government sector. It's designed to integrate seamlessly with the Inspired Flight uh, IF-800, the Tomcat, and an IF-1200 uh, platforms that creates a whole entire American-made ecosystem. Now, the GS-1 features a 7 inch glove compatible that's kind of important for a lot of users out there that boasts a 2000 nit of brightness which is quite a bit when you think about a traditional dji controller is about 700. now if you've ever had issues you know watching this in the sun they're definitely not going to have any issues with this screen right here it also has an nda compliant 2.4 gigahertz radio with up to six miles of range and has hot swappable batteries that provide up to five hours of continuous runtime the whole thing is housed in a IP55 rated enclosure for durability. Now on the inside, it's running Android 14 on a Qualcomm QCS6490 processor with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It's also packed with connectivity, including LTE, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.2. It's great to see some American companies out there building out their entire ecosystem and uh, making it work for all of their drones. Also this week, we visited FreeFly for their yearly partner event in Washington State. Uh, it was packed with announcements, including the Alta X Gen 2, a firmware update to the first Gen Alta X, which we got to fly, which was really smooth. FreeFly platform that are now back on the blue list after a, a short period where they were not. A bunch of Astro Max upgrades. They had the Ember toolbox for the FreeFly high-speed cameras. Also a million lumens spotlight. That's right, uh, Jason almost got one. Uh, called the uh, Flying Sun, and then even more cool LiDAR and uh, camera tech in general. Also at the show was a Verizon demo where they flew their FreeFly Astro Max from both Florida and Alaska using 4G and 5G connectivity. Now, it was great to see this bootstrap American manufacturer that's been actually growing while innovating and improving their product. Uh, congrats to Matt and his entire team for a great event and for some great success. Before we get into the last story, quick word about Commercial UAV Expo. It's right around the corner. As you may know, Pilot Institute is hosting three separate workshops, and I look forward to seeing you over there. On the 2nd, September 2nd, you can join Vic Moss, Amy Wigand, and also Jared uh, Janicek and myself for a deep dive into regulation, technology, and business strategies that are shaping the future of our industry. Then on the third, which is going to be on uh, Wednesday, I'm gonna be personally teaching a workshop on how to build your drone business. And then on the fourth, Jared is going to be teaching his professional mapping process. Now, spots are limited uh, and they are filling up. So make sure you go to pilotinstitute.com CUAV to see all the details and to secure your own seat. 
And finally this week, we can't end it without having a uh, Don't Be That Guy segment or a What Not To Do With Your Drone segment. Out in Lutz, Florida, a 49-year-old man allegedly crashed a drone into a residential home. But according to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, the drone was carrying multiple bags of methamphetamine and also fentanyl. Now, crashing a drone is bad enough, but what happened next is just, well, maybe unbelievable. The suspect, his name is Jason Brooks, allegedly went and knocked on the front door of the home in order to ask for the drone back and, of course, the drugs that came with it. Now, the homeowner, of course, called the police. When the deputies arrived, they recovered the drone and the illicit cargo. The suspect was arrested and now faces a list of charges, including possession of controlled substances with intent to sell. Now, you really can't make this stuff up. I wish we could, but we don't. And uh, this is just a reminder that, of course, as drones become more accessible, it's going to be used for all sorts of things, good and sometimes bad, like this one. But seriously, if you're going to do something illegal with a drone, maybe just don't go back and ask for it if you crash it, or even better, just don't do illegal things with a drone, maybe. But yeah, as always, please don't be that guy. And then in Post Flight, that's the show where we share all of our opinions. We are going to be talking about these stories along with more nuggets that we found in Part 108 and PRM. And then also Ag Eagle that's going to launch a new multispectral camera. So we'll see you on Monday for the live and then on Post Flight in the premium community. In the meantime, fly safe. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.